Therefore, we, we respond. He's responding to the call. It starts with this divine encounter. Each one of us, there must come a time in your own Christian life where you have encountered God for yourself. You cannot just remain at the superficial level. You cannot just have that uh, knowledge about God. You cannot survive with that just knowledge about God. You got to know God for yourself. God is calling. Sometimes it's a general call. Sometimes it is a specific calling. But you have to respond for yourself. How are you responding to that encounter with God? Because God is always in the process of calling. So the Apostle Paul encountered God in this bright vision that he saw on the way to Damascus. He heard the voice of God asking him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He became blind for a little while. He answered, who are you? Christ revealed to the Apostle Paul, and here we see the Apostle Paul. He became a different person. There was a change. He changed his life. He changed his perspective. In other words, he aligned himself to the purpose of God. Now, you see, if the Apostle Paul did not respond to the call, he would have missed the opportunity to be the guy who wrote three quarters of the New Testament. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote three quarters of the New Testament. The anointing of God was upon the Apostle Paul. It was the same anointing on Peter. But you know, Peter was a fisherman. All right? He received the Holy Spirit, but the Apostle Paul was a doctor of the law. He learned under Gamaliel. So, 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 so the anointing in an empty head can be dangerous. You know that? Yes. It's not just enough to say I've been anointed. So this person known as the Apostle Paul, as he is responding to the call, his acceptance of the call and his obedience to the call, yes, my brothers and my sisters, align him to the divine purpose. He align himself to the divine purpose. Because to reject the call of God will have put him outside of God's perfect will. Now, I want to emphasize this aspect. God does not always force us to do what we want to do. Because otherwise, he will not be God. He will not be a loving God. Can you imagine if we were God's puppet? Then God will stop being a loving God. For God to be a loving God, God had al must allow or has allowed free will to come in. Now, because of free will, human beings are capable of making choices. Human beings are capable of making choices. Now, these choices, sometimes they come with positive consequences or they come with negative consequences. But we are free. God will never impose. When God is calling somebody, God is not imposing on you. But God is giving you perspective for you to align your life with the divine purpose. Because when you align your life with the divine purpose, you are in what we call perfect will of God. Perfect will of God is the ultimate plan and purpose for creation. It is God's desires. It is what God's intend in terms of God's wisdom, God's goodness, and God's sovereignty. It includes everything, my brothers and my sisters, that aligns with the character of God that leads to the fulfillment of God's purposes. But you see, because of our poor choices, sometimes God allows what we call permissive will. Permissive will of God, it is the idea that God allows certain events or certain actions to occur that are not aligned with God's perfect will. God acknowledges that God has given human beings free will. And because of free will, we are capable, as I said, of making choices. And it's dangerous to operate in God's permissive will. 
It is very dangerous. It is not God's intention. It is not God's purpose. But because of free will, God may allow certain things to happen. God may allow the existence of evil, of suffering, and sin in the world. That's not God's perfect will, but God permits that to happen so that humans can exercise their free will. This is why when God is calling, the question becomes, how are you responding? Because God wants us to respond willingly without any pressure. All right. You must not receive Christ or believe in God because you are afraid of going to hell. You know, there was a time where preacher would preach about hell and people would give their life because they are afraid of hell. You must not receive Christ by fear. It must be a decision that you must take for your own because God accepts our offering and it must be done willingly out of our love for God because God first loved us. You know, God is proposing to us. When we say God is calling, you understand it's like God proposing love to us. God is initiating a process of relationship. Come on, somebody. I know some brothers, you have done that. You have proposed love to somebody. And what was your expectation? Come on, come on. You want the person to say yes, all right? You want the person to say yes willingly. You, you don't want it to be a one-side effort. You want it to be a mutual, mutual process, okay? You feel good when the person says yes, and you also feel good when the person is taking actions toward to, 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 to you know, to show that I've said yes. Because if someone says yes, but they're seeing other people or they're talking to other person, there is a problem there. Come on, somebody. Or if they say yes in the morning and then they tell you, I still have a couple of people I need to go on date with them. I know you are going to withdraw your, you are going to withdraw your proposition. You are just going to say, forget it. So when God is calling, see, it's an action of love. God is calling us. Now when we talk about call, we are not just talking about religious function. I want to emphasize that. Because God is calling us to a higher purpose of living. It can be within a different field. It does not have to be in a religious institution. It does not mean a call to become a pastor. It can be a call to become a health care uh, professional. It can be a call to become an educator. It can be a call for advo advocacy. It can be a call to do something that is greater than yourself, outside of yourself, so that you can bring God's purpose in the world. Yes, why we need to respond to the call because when we respond, we are into God's perfect will. And when we deny and we resist the call, my brothers and my sisters, we are out of alignment with divine purpose. We are out of alignment, alignment with divine purpose. You know, you got to be in line, in alignment with divine purpose. Otherwise, you are going to miss the point. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, when we reject divine calling, when we reject the call of God, maybe we are afraid of the responsibility that comes with the call. You know, sometimes the call, the call has its requirement. You, you don't just say, I, I, I accept the call. It comes with its requirement. And the Apostle Paul is bringing the attention of the believers here and say, since we have this ministry, since we have responded to the call, you know, he's encouraging them. We have renounced to secret and shameful ways of living. Uh, we do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Oh, yes. He's, 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 he's telling us this process of saying yes to the Lord. It comes with us and lying our lives, you know, Getting out of our way, getting out of our ambition, getting out of our motivation and say we are going to uh, uh, unlearn everything and put ourselves under the leadership of God. Put ourselves under the authority of God. To be under the authority of God. When we accept the call, 
It requires some level of obedience, and obedience requires some level of relinquishment. Because you cannot obey if you are not submissive. Obedience requires some kind of submission. We submit to God. All right? Now do we submit to God in our everyday experience? We follow God. My brothers and my sisters, in this time, God is still calling us to become an extension of God's presence in the world. The test of Christianity, let me emphasize this again to you. The test of Christianity is not how much Bible we know. We can increase our knowledge of the Bible. But the test of Christianity is not how much Old Testament scripture or New Testament scripture we know. The test of Christianity in the world is our Christian act. Is how we act in the world. That's the test of Christianity. Christianity is not just an organized religion. We have made it organized religion. But it is more than organized religion. Christianity is a movement. It is a movement. It is God coming to us. The word becoming flesh. God assuming our humanity. Taking us out of from where we were into a new journey. God is saving us. We are experiencing divine transformation. God is working in us. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, how do we act in the world? One, we shape our awareness of the divine calling. Because divine calling reminds you that you are not like anybody else. You are not to act like anybody else. There is something about God in you. There is something about God upon you. This is why you don't act like anybody else. This is why you are different. You know? Because God has invested in you. God has made it possible for you to be the person that you are. The grace of God is upon you. The grace of God is giving you the ability to become everything God wants us you to become. It is the grace of God. Because even our ability to answer divine calling is not our own effort. So that we don't even boast about it. Hey, I've answered the call by grace. Do you realize that? Grace alone. Because God is at work in our lives even when we are not aware of it. It is God that made it possible for you even to understand the love of God and to be willing to say, yes, Lord. The ability to hear the voice of God is a product of the grace of God. By grace alone, we hear God calling. And by grace alone, we respond to the call. And because of grace, grace sustains us to live with grace in our lives. Believers, Christians are wounded healers. We are not perfect, but we are marching toward perfection. God has called us not to be perfect. It's not about perfection. God is calling us to participate in the perfection that God is giving us because it is God who's making us perfect. We don't make perfect ourselves. Stop trying to make perfect of yourself. That's why you are frustrated. Don't try with your own means. Don't try by all effort. Your all effort is useless. It's futile. It is through the grace of God as we make ourselves available to God and say, God, use me. Make me the person that you want me to become. Work in me and through me to fulfill your purpose. And when we do that, my brothers and my sisters, we are open to the possibilities of God. You know, where there is light, what happened? Darkness disappeared. Jesus said, I am the light. Whenever God is present, whenever Jesus is present, there is light. This is why the Apostle Paul is talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ that we have. He said what? Even our gospel is veiled. It's not veiled for us, but it's veiled for those who are perishing. Because the God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers. That they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. 
By grace alone, we receive the call. By grace alone, we respond to the call. And by grace alone, the grace of God is sustaining us every day. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, our acceptance of the call and our obedience to God comes as a product of our willingness. All God wants us to do is to be willing to say, I'm ready to participate. Come on. That's all God is asking us, to say, yes, Lord, I'm available. But the challenge is we say yes, and then we want to do the job of God. All right? It's like one day I gave a ride to somebody, and he began to teach me how to drive. Come on. I'm the driver. You know? You cannot take the place of God. You cannot take the place of the Holy Spirit. You need to let God do what God can do, what God is supposed to do for you. Your part is to say yes. You know, we human beings, we love the idea of achieving something. We, we, we are proud when we achieve something. And this idea of grace, sometimes we don't even grasp it. We don't grasp it. We don't get it right. We don't just get hold of it. You know, why? Because of our uh, human attitude of trying to do something, to achieve something. We want to feel that we have earned it. And then we try. And then we try. And then we try. And then we fail. And then we fail. And then we fail. And then we get discouraged. So Paul is saying here, do not get discouraged because we carry this treasure in jars of clay. Oh yes, our bodies, our life is looked as the jars of clay. Yet we have this treasure in us. Yes, God's surpassing power is in us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despair. We are not in despair. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because we have this treasure in us. Christ in us. When we respond to the call, Christ says, I'm knocking at the door. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Christ says, I'm knocking at the door. If you open, I'll come in. Me and my father, we will dwell in you. I love that text. Because that text always reminds me that when I did open the heart, the door of my heart, God came inside my life and God is with me. Because God promised I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. When I opened the door, God has fulfilled the promise. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have that treasure in you. When you have responded to that call of having that relationship with God, God promised that I will be there. So not only God is with us in the spiritual realm where we have a relationship with God, but even in our everyday experience, there is this divine calling that we can rely on God's guidance. God is calling us every morning to a higher purpose. A higher purpose, my brothers and my sisters, to fulfill the goodness of God in the world, to fulfill the righteousness of God in the world, to fulfill the justice of God in the world. God is calling us and God is counting on us. This is the call upon the church. We are the body of Christ. And God is counting on us. So as we respond to the call, the call help us to be in alignment with divine purposes. And when we respond to the call, we walk in God's perfect will. We don't want to walk in God's permissive will because it is dangerous. As we respond to the call every day, we are experiencing transformation and growth. If you notice, when you are aware of divine calling in your life, when you are aware of your relationship with God, it creates that sense of growth, that sense of wanting to deepening your relationship with God, your faith to expand your understanding of yourself, 
of the world, of uh, 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 the qualities of God that God is calling you to do. Because of the calling of God and your response to God, you are participating into a growth experience, a transformation that brings and develops divine characteristics, the fruit of the Spirit of God, the qualities of God in your life. Because you have said yes to the calling, transformation and growth is taking place in your life. If you notice how resilience has come to you, if you notice how compassion has come to you, if you notice how humility has come to you, if you notice how patience has come to you, if you notice how you love even the people that you are not able to love, and sometimes you wonder, how come I've managed that? Can I get a witness in the house? Come on. God is at work in our lives. There are things that you use not to tolerate, but now you can sit there and say, I understand. You know, by growth, by the grace of God, you know, I understand. You understand other human beings better than you used to understand them. You know how many times it used to be all about you, but now you are looking at the other person's perspective and listen the story from their own perspective? If you notice how you used to be judgmental and how you have stopped to judge anybody, you have just said, I'm going to leave it to the Lord. It's not up to me to judge. If you notice that, because you are responding to that calling. Because at the end of the day, God does the selection. God decides. No one has the key to the door of heaven. Christ says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Those that come to the Father, they come through me. So, that's the condition. No one has the key. No one decides if one person is going to go in or one person is not going to go in. That's not up to us. It's, it's God. So transformation and growth are also the result of our response as we are responding to this divine calling. We are participating. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, God is perfecting us. The Holy Spirit is working through us to prepare us, to make us become like Christ. I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be more like you. Yes. There are people who will never read the Bible. Some people will never put their feet in the church. But perhaps you become a living Bible for them. Because of how you act, you become a living Bible for them. They may criticize you, but when you are not there, they say, ah, 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 that one is different. That one is different. Why? Because the light of God is shining in you, and you are allowing that light. This calling, this divine calling, this response is not just a one event. It is a process of life. It is a life journey. Every day we are responding to the divine calling. Every day, my brothers and my sisters, we are making that decision. I have decided to follow Jesus Christ. The world is behind me and the cross is in front of me. Every day we make that decision. This is why he said every day we carry with us the death of Christ. Yes, we are always carrying around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Yes. We are put to death every day. We carry the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. So the Apostle Paul is telling them, encouraging the believers, that this response is an everyday experience. Every day, my brothers and my sisters, we are aware God is calling us. And I love there used to be a time where people would wear a bracelet that says, what will Jesus do? I remember that time. We don't wear that anymore. That was powerful. Just a reminder, God is calling me. 
in every situation. What will I do? God is calling us. Thanks be to God. Because you, this morning, you have said, yes, Lord. Here I am. I'm listening. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but there was a whole lot in there. <laughs> if Pastor covered a whole lot of stuff this morning, and there was uh, several of those things that really kind of spoke to me. Uh, but maybe, maybe one of the most important ones is that the verbs that he used are in present tense. God is calling. How are you responding? You know, God called us, and we responded and God will call us and we will respond, but this makes it continuous. It's always in the right now. And so one of the things that really kind of spoke to me is, you know, in all areas of my life, at all times, God is calling and how am I responding? Are there any areas of my life that I have compartmentalized, not really given over to God? and? Uh, I think I'm going to have to spend some time in quiet reflection to identify what those are and in prayer to find out where, what strongholds have I still not let go of. If you guys would, please stand and lift your voices and worship with us as we ask God to help us have the faith to overcome those last strongholds.